Hello everyone and welcome to the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized in AMA National Championship. It was just a year ago that this man, Craig DeLong aboard the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna, took the XC1 title over this guy, the 514 of Stuart Baylor, looking for a little redemption here in 2024, but he's got his work cut out for him. We had a historic season in the XC1 class last year with eight different winners, seven of which came in the first seven rounds. So it is anybody's guess what's going to happen this year. Will we see a new face at the top step of the podium? Will we see some dominance this year? Just some of the questions on everyone's mind as we get this season off and rolling. It's almost time for the green flag to wave and for racing to get underway right here on Racer TV. Hello everyone and welcome to round number one of the Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series. We're here in Union, South Carolina for the VP Racing Fuel's Big Buck GNCC. My name is Zach Heron. I'll be covering all the action for you this afternoon and plenty of action do we have in store. A historic 2023 where this guy, Craig DeLong aboard the number one Rockstar Energy Husqvarna gets the job done. And we were able to talk to Craig coming into the season, find out how he's feeling finally being able to run that number one. The goal is still the same as to win races and, and try to defend it. And, uh, you know, if you go out and, and win races and put yourself in good positions, you, you know, you should be able to, to back it up. So um, that's my plan is, you know, not to defend it or, you know, do it, but just to go out and win races. And, you know, if I can do that and, and, uh, and do my job, that's, yeah, that's all I can do. Stuart Baylor on the 514 finished second last year in the XC1 class. He switches over to Kawasaki with the Rocky Mountain Red Bear Racing Team. We were able to chat with him. Realistically, the last few years have been do or die, and it's been it's been uh, a mishap or two away basically for the last three or four years on a championship. So, at this point, it's just mainly making sure that we finish the races and uh, i think that's going to be the biggest part for me like i think everybody's seen it like i have had the speed i've just haven't had the 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 program so i'm hoping that uh this year we built the right program with teammate ben kelly out with a hip injury all eyes fall on the 969 of johnny gerard with their fmf red bull ktm racing team we were able to chat with him how he feels coming into 2024. a lot riding on my shoulders this year with uh racing three series and uh yeah a little little added pressure but i like pressure it's good it uh you know it, it puts you in a spot where you know it's uh a, i guess do or die situation so i like it there you have it do or die hey let's take a look at some big buck history it was Stu baylor grabbing the win last year ben kelly the year before that and grant baylor the year before that so let's see who's gonna grab it in 2024 the green flag waves ricky towery doing his thing in turn one and it was a battle for who was going to grab that whole shot. But the 2-1-2 machine, the Ampro Yamaha of Ricky Russell, was the first around the first turn. But he had some company. The 969, you heard it from him just a minute ago, do or die. And he's trying to do it early here at round one. Johnny Girard follows him off into the woods. And Ricky Russell doing a great job under pressure early. Now these guys got a nice pace going. There was Johnny Girard second with like uh, Lane Michael maybe in that third place spot as they came through the woods for the first time. Some of our heavy hitters a little further back than we expected. Now the other Red Bull KTM you just saw go by there, that was Dante Oliveira making the trip over from the West Coast and trying his hands out at some GNCC racing as well. Let's take a look now at the XC2 250 Pro Class. Liam Draper trying to back up that number one plate he earned last year. But Angus Reardon and the rest of the XC2 class has something to say about it. How about the Liquamali Beta Boys? One and two coming out of turn number one, even a little fist in the air to celebrate as they come around grabbing that whole shot and lead the XC2 pack off into the woods. Uh, a couple of names worth mentioning in this class as well. Grant Davis also aboard that KTM team. Uh, Cody Barnes and Rui Barbosa on the Phoenix Racing Honda. Plenty of names that can jump up into the mix and try to steal a win away 
from uh, the number one of Liam Draper. There you see not the start he was looking for here early in the season, but don't worry, he's got three hours of racing to try to catch up and make some passes. Let's take a look at the FMF XC3 125 Pro-Am class, my personal favorite sounding and smelling classes we have here at GNCC. And it's Dirt Bike Jesus, Dustin Simpson, hugging the inside, trying to grab a hole shot, but he's just a little late around the outside. The Husky Rider gonna pinch him off and grab the hole shot early. We take a look at them here and buzzing their way through the woods and back off and rolling. Another one of the beta riders, I believe that's Jack Walker there coming through, trying to make some early passes as they settle into the race pace. The 2024 race season is officially underway. We're gonna get a word from our sponsors and we'll be back to the VP Racing Fuels, Big Buck GNCC. Progressive GNCC Racing is brought to you by Progressive. Progressive could save you hundreds of dollars on your automobile and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized e-turbo bicycles. It's you, only faster. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to beautiful Union, South Carolina, the VP Racing Fuels Big Buck GNCC off and rolling. And look at this, the 969 of Johnny Girard has slipped into the lead and already started to put a little distance between that guy, the 212 of Ricky Russell and the number one of Craig DeLong sitting in third. Lane Michael shuffles back to the fourth place spot with Jordan Ashburn rounding out your top five. So we see the number one already starting to make some moves. Hey, they're second in XC1 from last year. Stu Baylor looks like Dante Oliveira just behind him and Mike Wachowski on the Phoenix Racing Honda jumping up to the XC1 class this year. The riders making their way through pit lane for the first time. And look at this, a little back wheel action for Johnny Girard. You think he's feeling comfortable, folks? That is dangerous. Look at this, a little stall here coming through. A shake of the head. You can actually see the smile underneath that helmet. Grabs a little hydration and is back off and rolling. But just behind him, you saw the Ampro Yamaha of Ricky Russell still in this thing. We take a look at the Yamaha Racing Live drone. Some fantastic racing coverage. We have the eyes in the sky all of the lines selection that these riders are using over three hours. It's incredible to watch how much these riders are moving around throughout different sections of the track as the race lines develop. Look at that, ducking under some trees, maybe taking a little bit of branches with them and already starting to see just a little bit of dust kicking up. A dry weekend here in South Carolina, dropping back to the XC2 class and it is one of those Landers Racing KTM machines out front, followed by the Beta. And that was the other Landers Racing KTM just behind him. So some tight racing up at the top of the field in XC2, both Gus Reardon and Grant Davis up front. There are the Phoenix Honda Racing Boys, Rue Barbosa just in front of Cody Barnes. As we head back to the top of the field, the question was gonna be, is Liam Draper gonna be able to back up the championship? But I don't think it takes long before you start to realize there is some steep competition here in XC2 both young and old. Gus Reardon taking it all the way down to the wire last year. An absolute dogfight between himself and Liam Draper, but his teammate Grant Davis trying to make a statement here as well. Also the Liquid Molly Beta team really having a good showing here at round one early. I believe that was Toby Cleveland who's also jumping up to the XC2 class after a strong performance in XC3 last year. Now we catch a glimpse of the number one, Liam Draper. Looks like he is just in front of one of the Phoenix Racing Hondas, followed by Josh Toth on the 206 machine, doing a cool, unique type uh, racing tour this year in 2024. Some GNCCs, some other stuff as well. And behind him was Bad Thad Duval aboard that Rocky Mountain Red Bear Kawasaki team, jumping back to the XC2 class, sparking a little controversy as only Thad can do, but he is excited and ready to show what he's got here in XC2 in 2024. Fantastic track conditions as we watch our rainy champ pick his way through the South Carolina soil. Rocks, roots, and just a little bit of dust coming up on this South Carolina soil. Rui Barbosa tiptoeing his way through under pressure from Toth. 
and Duval right there as well. Lot of patience in the early parts of these races. We check back in with XC1 and Johnny Girard handling business right now. Got a comfortable pace. Now he's not walking away a minute plus, but he's got just a couple of seconds where he's able to take the lines that he wants. And he's taking Ricky Russell along with him. But this guy, Craig DeLong on the number one, you see he's got himself hydrated and he is on the hunt. Lane Michael, Jordan Ashburn, and Stu Baylor now starting to creep up into this as well. There goes Dante Oliveira and Mike Wachowski. So an absolute freight train of XC1 riders we have early. Here is Lyndon Snodgrass aboard that Babbitt's Online Racing Kawasaki. Jumping up to the XC1 class full time. There goes Josh Strang aboard the JS Sherco machine, changing machines as well. There was the Grizzly Grant Baylor passing by. And then we start to see our XC2 class creeping into the picture as well. Now, if any of you don't know, the XC2 class going on about a minute delay, so we do have adjusted time as far as the overall timing and scoring goes. Fun fact, never been done before, an overall win from the XC2 class. Maybe we'll see it in 2024. Who knows? It hasn't happened yet, but these guys are going to make it absolutely tough to do. Johnny Girard and Ricky Russell sinking the hooks into the back of the KTM and tagging along with them. Craig DeLong trying to do just that as well. He wants to make this a three-rider fight for the lead here in South Carolina. Jordan Ashburn has made the move around Lane Michael, as does Stu Baylor. Look at that, showing how some of those different lines, sometimes they pay off, sometimes they don't work out like you hope they do. Lane Michael losing a spot right there in that section. So your leaders taking their time right now, a lot of pacing strategy going on, especially when you have some fast riders up front early. They don't want to blow all of their energy early. They want to save some for that last hour and really that last lap to dig deep. As we see, look like Craig DeLong, Jordan Ashburn taking some different lines as well as he now starts to fall under pressure from Stu Baylor. And there it is. Sometimes pressures make diamonds, sometimes pressure cracks them. And Jordan Ashburn having just a little tip over there, back up and rolling. And not cracking under the pressure is Johnny Girard. Ricky Russell been there the whole time, continues to put the effort on, as does Craig DeLong who's kind of in no man's land right now, but this guy, Stu Baylor, seems to be the man on the move. Now, he has not shaken Jordan Ashburn, had that little tip over. He's okay. He was a past champion for a reason. He knows how to get back up and keep going, but they better get going in a hurry if they want a chance of catching this guy. Johnny Girard, he talked about it coming into the season, uninjured this year, feeling fully at 100%. He really gets to show what he's capable of doing in this XC1 class, as now Stu Baylor has caught up to the rear wheel of Craig DeLong. Might be bringing Jordan Ashburn along with him, and we could see a five or six rider freight train up at the front of the field. This guy's saying no thanks. Look at him. He's wheeling his way past lap riders. I want a table for one out front. And Ricky Russell trying to stop him from doing that, but now we see Gerard ever so slightly starting to creep away from the rest of the field. Stu Baylor, uh, he's known for kind of gaining that momentum late. He's, he's like a diesel truck, right? He's got to warm up early and then he starts to pick up speed as the race wears on. But the question is, has he warmed up a little too late? Is he going to be able to track down Johnny Gerard? We're going to have to wait and find out as we see your riders or your leaders, I should say, starting to make their way through lap traffic. That's a whole different ball game when it comes to obstacles, variables, and challenges. Riders on the same course at a slower pace. We've seen it play countless tricks on leaders, forcing them to take different lines, forcing them to cause mistakes. We'll see whether or not we get any of that here at round one. A lot of patience I'm seeing in Johnny Girard right now. Very cool, calm, and collective. We saw him pull the wheelie coming through pit lane, absolutely feeling feeling happy. And we can't stress that enough. As racers, oftentimes they're, they're under a lot of stress. Is wow, look at how much Girard has opened this gap up over Ricky Russell. Ricky, however, no breathing room from this guy, Stu Baylor. And he's bringing Craig DeLong along with him. And wow, yeah, Stu Baylor has made the pass around DeLong. So, a bit of a statement there from Stu aboard that Kawasaki machine, making the switch over, still uh, running multiple hats under the tent, I should say, uh, uh, part rider, part team owner and team manager with that Rocky Mountain Red Bear Kawasaki team. But he feels extremely confident and is showing what he's capable of here at Big Buck. As look at that, he has now made the pass around Ricky Russell as well. So Stu Baylor moving to the front in a hurry and trying to track down Johnny Girard. 
Now Johnny's done a fantastic job. You hear him revving it up a little bit, letting the lap riders know, hey, there's a race going on. You're not in this one. Please don't make this any harder on me than it has to be. Let me slide by. And he is doing a great job of just that pushing that FMF Red Bull KTM to the limits. As we flip back, looks like we should catch a glimpse of Stu coming through. And this is a fantastic view of exactly how much he has opened that gap up to. We saw him just starting to kind of creep away a few shots ago, but he has really laid the hammer down and has opened up that gap as now Craig DeLong looks to have made the pass around Ricky Russell as well. So Craig obviously got what it takes. The only three-time winner we had in 2023. And uh, I think he attributes that a lot as far as helping him get that number one plate to be able to do it repeatedly in that deep of a field last year. I think helped with a ton of confidence for the number one as well. Got that dog in him, as we were saying a lot of last year. And now he's trying to let the big dog eat as he chases after Stu Baylor and Johnny Girard. There goes Jordan Ashburn. Jordan not out of this by any means as well. Plenty of fitness. Grant Baylor starting to turn the heat on late as well. I believe that's Evan Smith going by on the 347. So Grant, another one. Must be something in the Baylor blood. They get going as the race wears on. These guys would probably love for it to be a, a four-hour race as fit and as long as they can ride it at this kind of pace. But right now, Johnny Girard, he's got the pace, he's got the fitness, he's got the lines, and he has got the lead as we see Stu Baylor coming through. We saw Jordan Ashburn, now we're seeing Grant Baylor. So did something happen to the number one of Craig DeLong? Looks like he may have dropped off. There goes... Girard checking in, got that straight back, very good form technically. And then there goes Stu Baylor. Not that Stu doesn't have a great style, but he's more of a, a bulldozer type style, if you will. If the tree doesn't want to move, I'll move it myself. There goes Jordan Ashburn. And man, Grant Baylor really starting to put the pressure on the back of Ashburn. We see Evan Smith. So once again, did not see the number one of Craig DeLong in that shot. As we check back in up front, and this is a good spot to be in. I'm sure he's getting pit boards. His team is telling him, hey, you've got company. Uh, it's first and second in XC1 from last year. But Johnny Girard, cool, calm, and collected, doesn't seem to be feeling the pressure. And this is why, folks, right there at the top of your screen, that is second place coming through. Stu Baylor, he's got his work cut out for him. He cannot see Girard. And so he's kind of in no man's land, just hoping that his pace is faster than the KTMs and that he's going to be able to catch up and make a fight out of this thing before it's all said and done. He has also started to open the gap up over Grant Baylor, who now moves into the third place spot. So we have, we have lost the number one of Craig DeLong. And it looks like Jordan Ashburn still up and rolling, but falling off that pace just a little bit. So the Baylor boys are coming in hot here to close out their home race in South Carolina, but it's this guy, Johnny Girard, boy, the FMF Red Bull KTM leading the way. We're going to catch a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back right here on Racer TV. Progressive GNCC Racing is brought to you by Progressive. Progressive could save you hundreds of dollars on your automobile and motorcycle insurance. Specialized, specialized e-turbo bicycles. It's you, only faster. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Union, South Carolina. What a race we have on our hands to kick off the 2024 season. The VP Racing Fuels Big Buck GNCC coming to a close. And this guy, Johnny Gerard, man, has he looked comfortable up front, made a few quick passes early, and has been uh, smooth sailing ever since then. Got a nice gap over second place, which is going to be the 514 of Stu Baylor having a great performance to start off the season and a great showing on the new team as well. And the other Baylor out there in the XC1 class, Grant Baylor, a strong performance for him as well, working his way up into the third place spot, trying to put both of the Baylor boys up on the podium. But this guy, Johnny Girard, man, what can you say? An impressive performance right from the green flag. And he takes a look over the shoulder, make sure he doesn't have any company. 
and is going to bring it across the line. So there you have it. Johnny Girard going to grab the XC1 win here at Big Buck. And you see him already celebrating, chatting with the fans and the team. And we were able to hear from him how he got it done. I felt good, you know, I, I went to ISD after the season was over and didn't have much of an off season and uh, yeah, I was right back down in Florida and uh, kind of never skipped the beat this off season and uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess it shows and uh, paid off and yeah, I, I feel good for this season and uh, I love Florida, the sand whoops are next, so let's get it. And that is bad news for the rest of the field if he is already looking forward to the Florida sand whoops. Stu Baylor finishing second on the day. Let's hear how he was feeling with his first race performance. Yeah, as much as uh, much the track got slowed down, it was it, it, it was ridiculous that we couldn't make any make any moves, and uh, yeah, I was I was thoroughly upset with that. But um, yeah, we uh, too little, too late. But I knew I was the fast guy on the track, so we're ready. We're ready for the next one. A strong performance and plenty of confidence coming from Stu Baylor finishing second on the day. We take a look at the top 10 overall. Grant Baylor going to put both of the Baylor boys up on the box here at round one, the hometown race. My way through that last lap, I knew I was rolling faster than anybody out there. Uh, the guy in the pits told me I was running about half a minute faster lap times than the leaders. So, man, I knew I was just on it and uh, was feeling good out there. Just needed a better start to get up there and run with these top guys. but. Uh, Man, I was running them down there at the end, and it was an awesome race. The, the track was perfect, dirt was perfect. Oh, it was a perfect day. A perfect day indeed to kick off this 2024 Progressive GNCC racing season. We take a look at the specialized race recap. Ricky Russell grabbing the whole shot just over Johnny Girard. And it wouldn't be long before Girard was able to make the move, grab the early race lead, bringing Ricky Russell along with him. They had a nice two rider battle out front for that first hour, as did Stu Baylor and Craig DeLong. A couple of position swappings there as they battled with Jordan Ashburn as the race would wear on. Johnny Girard continued to inch away little by little until he opened up a rather comfortable lead. Stu Baylor continued to pick up the pace, but it was just too little too late, as he said in his post race interview, wasn't quite able to catch up to the back of the KTM machine. A tough day at the office for the number one of Craig DeLong. As Johnny, perfect form, cool, calm, and collected under pressure. Stu, you can see right there, charging hard, pushing the absolute limits, as does Grant Baylor, working his way up to the third place spot, really on fire in that final hour. But it was too little too late as Johnny Girard pops the wheelie and grabs the win here at round one, starting the season off the exact way he was hoping to do it. And there you see the big smile on the face. What a way to kick off the 2024 season. What a race here at the VP Racing Fuels Big Buck GNCC. Till next time, we'll see you on Racer TV.